What did you find? I found I was here to serve God. Yeah. And that I thought that I was being called, and I felt like I... Um, so you felt like it's something that you were going to step through, no matter what? Yeah, but uh, I remember telling da me and David at the table, and we were just all like, we can believe that this is happening. And I never, ever saw David cry. And he started crying at the table. And then I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm here to represent God who sent me. Just the depth of it is so compelling. Well, right, and you know what? It was really beautiful because, you know, I've been, like, I've been serving God ever since my first experience. But I felt like such, I felt like I was being called, you know, to come and represent God. Mm -hmm. And and coming there to totally, and I felt like I was on a mission, no ego. Like I really was here using my body on a mission to share the good news. Yeah, there was some inspiration. Yeah, there, like there was total like re really, and, and I actually asked other people to go with me, and they wouldn't. <laughs> I thought the Your station mission. should go with me, or David <laughs> should go with me, and they're like, "No, we really think that this is your thing. This is what you need to do." And so you got there, and yep. they flew you there, and yep. yeah, yep. Then you had to wait for quite some time, right, mm -hmm. in the hallway, and before you went in. Picture of Jesus in the marble. Yeah, that was really flipped out. I was sitting there, and I had been. I was. They told me I was probably going to have to wait a while because all these psychologists were in there testifying. And so I was just sitting outside in the foyer, like, and it was like a really old courthouse, and and I was just really praying to God and just wanting to be totally clear and and just feeling like I just wanted just to be able to authentically, and if anything was in my mind, I wanted to clear it up, and I just wanted to be there in truth, and and I was, um, so I was in prayer, and meditating, and I was just like falling in love with Jesus, and just feeling the depth of this experience that he was giving me, and, and then I, I was praying, and I said, I said, oh, Jesus, I said, it'd be really beautiful if I could see some symbol that you were with me here. And so I was there, and I, and I opened up my eyes, and I saw this, like, little, cro it was like this brown marble wall with, like, white stuff all through it, and I saw this little cross on the top of the thing. I thought, oh, that's nice. And then all of a sudden, my eyes shifted down the wall, and all of a sudden, this huge image of Jesus just completely peered in the marble. And I'm not kidding you. It totally blew me away. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, holy shit. And it was like the perfect image of Jesus just in the marble with his eyes looking right at me. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, holy shit. You know, really, I'm like thinking, oh my God. And all of a sudden, I just started, like the eyes were like looking at me, and I'm like eye-gazing with this freaking image. And I couldn't even believe it. And, all the, and it's like a quiet, like, corridor. And all of a sudden, some, like, attorney or something walked by, and they go, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I got to talk to you, man. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I was, like, totally blown away. I said, listen, I'm, like, sitting here, and I'm praying. And I, like, just told him everything. I said, I said do you believe in God? He goes, I, yeah, I guess I do. And I go, listen, man. <laughs> I said, I was praying that Jesus' man's going to show me. I said, I'm testifying on death row today, and I'm asking Jesus to be with me. I said, look, do you see this? Listen, this whole image like this. And this guy goes, oh, my God. And he said, he saw it, too. He saw every, listen, and, and I'm like, listen, I said, look, he goes, oh, my God. He said, I've worked in this courthouse for 20 years, and I never saw that. It was, like, embedded in the marble. Beautiful. Is that a miracle or what? And I was, like, sitting there just like, Holy shit! And so I don't like, and so I'm sitting there. Oh, she needs a sugar with me. You know, what I mean? like that would be <laughs> what like, I have to worry about. Right, and the whole thing was it. And his eyes were like just looking at me, and I'm like, okay, I'm an eye gaze with you. You know, yeah. we're gonna sit here and eye gaze. And then, then like, and then it's all quiet. I'm like, oh hi. I'm feeling like, oh hi. I just can't even freaking believe. It. So then another guy comes up like, listen to me. I gotta share this with you. Like people are walking by. Well, there wasn't very many people walking by. There's only two guys. They both got it. Well, yeah, yeah, they both got it, and they both saw it. Yeah, and then, like, the thing is, is and what usually happens with people with me, they think, like, I'm a Lulu, I'm out of my mind, <laughs> was uh, he saw it, and it kind of flipped him out. Like, he actually got a little scared. And he's like, so who are you here with? And I said, well, I'm here testifying for Freeman May, and 
he's like, and he got like really afraid. I could see like he didn't want to be part of it. <clears throat> and then it was, listen, I sat there for eight hours in that room, in that area with Jesus. Mm. And it was funny, I found those two guys later, one in this wall, office talking, and I think they were talking about me, because then <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, I'm here with Jesus, man. Yeah. So it was a beautiful gift. Yeah. It's a great, a great sign. It was a great sign, and I yeah. thought, okay, I'm, and I was in peace, and it was like I was just sitting there with Jesus. Okay. And then, well, one at one point, because um, because he, this gentleman was is on death row, they brought him out of this uh, elevator that, and the courthouse was like the courtroom was like right here, and this elevator was there, and they took him out, took the guy that was on death row uh, into the elevator. And and it was the most powerful thing because he knew that I was there, mm -hmm. and we never really like really looked at each other or did anything. But it was the most powerful thing because he was going out of the courthouse, out of the courtroom, and he turned and they had him in shackles and everything. And I have never seen anybody in my life that was so desperate for like to have eye contact with me. And like he was like they had him chained up, you know, and he was going like just trying to look at me, and, and I was like just shining the love of God, I was just like, oh, I love you, I love you, Freeman May, you know, I'm here with you, you know, but it's like this total connection of this love that we were just, he was like in amazement, yeah. he was in total amazement, and I was in amazement that I was being able to do it for yeah, him, exactly. you know, like I was like, oh my God, it's a gift from God, man, and he's like, oh, he was totally receiving it, yeah, yeah. and so then you got into the courtroom, they called you in, yeah, yeah, they called And me. your family was on one side. Oh, right? no, my family was not there. They, they actually there. were called the next day, and, like, we were kind of sequestered because we were on different sides of the... Mm -hmm. They were on the, whatever you call it. Prosecution. Right, they were on the prosecution side, and I was on the defense. Mm -hmm. And so when you walked into the courtroom, as yeah. the courtrooms are, and you were feeling all inspired because of the time that you had spent with Jesus in the hallway, and you did have a look at Freeman May before... You went into the courtroom, so you had that exchange, mm -hmm. and then there you were. Yeah, but I just kind of, I didn't really feel like, I really felt like I didn't really have anything, like I just thought I would a be asked. Right. Like, if they asked me, then I'll say what I need to say. It wasn't anything that I needed to do, but um, they just asked me how my life has changed through this, and what has happened in my life through, since the time that you know, that this had happened and <clears throat> and what my feel and how did I feel about Freeman May. And it was the most beautiful thing because I looked right in his eyes and I said, Freeman May, I said, I completely forgive you. And I said, and I am here to represent God who sent me to tell you of your perfect innocence. And I said, and I am here I said, I ha I said, we are one. I was like, just, it was like this whole thing. And, and he was totally like in amazement. And then they were like trying to sustain me or something. <laughs> <laughs> Objection. Objection. I'm not saying. Yeah, whatever. Objection. I don't know what they were trying to do to me. But I was like, okay, I'll stop. But I have, you know, I'm going to say what I have to say. But didn't the judge say, no, I want oh, to no, hear Oh, no, well, what happened was is because they told me that the prosecution probably won't even ask me any questions because it'll look bad for them. Like they'll rest right, their right. case. Like, they never they badger the victim, like I'm a victim. They never badger the victim. So they said, I don't expect any any questions from the prosecution. And so I thought, well, after that was all done, I was done. Then all of a sudden, and then the defense rested their case. They go, we rest our case. And I thought, okay, I'm going to get up. And all of a sudden, the uh, prosecution says,